Woo ha the fucking bad. Corona clings to every ball just like play clings to rats. <laughs> Dude, I have to say, your dancing impressed me. And you're singing. I was, uh, you know, I think that there's a musical in our future. I'm just going to say that. I know that you don't, you think it's gay. You've said musicals are gay. But, dude, there are musicals where there's death. There's fucking gangs. There's fucking cheating. There's one into the woods where fucking the prince is like, he's just trying to fuck Cinderella, but he's pretending that he's in love with her. That's a real, it's a real musical, dude. It's a true, true thing. Musicals are stupid. Oh, God, here we go. Why? Because musicals take so long to write, you got to be good with story. True. You got to have good actors, and you got to be good mm. with song and lyrics. Right. And how many people see it? The eight hundred or so that can well, fit into a concert. Well, well, well. Until they make it into a movie, and then usually those are gigantic hits. But you're you're right. You're right about that. But it is a beautiful art. Would you say it's a beautiful art? No. Can I retrace <laughs> your obsession with musical theater? Sure. It's I. It started later in life. I'm no, not. It's no, not like no, it was always. No, it's not no. like I was born with it. No. No. Your your recent obsession with musical yeah, okay, theater. Yeah. Sure. My recent obsession came with musical when theater, somebody yeah. mentioned West Side Story in the yeah. car yeah, on the Ian. shoot this weekend, yeah, and Ian. then you sang one phrase of the song. Yeah. What's the phrase you keep singing over and over? I love to live in America. He did we that love about to live in America. He did yeah. that about 800 times in the car ride home. It's funny and now you're obsessed with musical theater i am i nobody else at, I looked, cares i looked Leo. at a bunch of clips i really feel like me and you could do the the duo prince it's called agony from into the woods if you know anything about musical uh -huh. theater please let, let us know in the comments if you think me and danny could play uh -huh. the princes in into the woods doing agony like one wants to fuck rapunzel and the other one wants to fuck cinderella so they're both talking about the agony because one can't get up onto the tower and the other one can't find the bitch okay so it's hilarious and they're, okay. agony anyway it's it would be fucking hilarious i don't know man you know you've you've given me some acting you know i have an acting bug i, I go to acting class you've given me some opportunities to do a lot of acting in this channel you know and and now you know if i just want to live my dreams danny okay i want to do it i just want to do some musical theater right, you know well, what i mean I'll i've never you. nobody's ever let me see because I can't sing, but you know, be funny. I'm sure it'll be hilarious, and I'll let you write that idea for your channel. Oh, you are such an asshole. Are you gonna perform it with you? Gonna come? You gonna come out? If it takes me 15 minutes of my day, there it is. It. What an asshole! You know, I have an idea for a video. Actually, maybe maybe we should do. <laughs> would you do farting in? No. I've told you I don't like fart humor. It's not fart humor. It's really reacting to the fart. So I have this great fart machine gun, right? So let, nope. let's. It's not a nope. fart machine gun. Nope. It's a fart. You put it, let's say you're, it's in your pocket. You're in line at Trader Joe's. I get where this is going. You're, t you're hitting on a girl. I fucking hit the button. Mm -hmm. You fart. Now you got to react. You know what I mean? Mm. What do you think? Sort of funny. It could be really funny though, right? It's sort of funny. I hate fart humor though, which is strange yeah. because I yeah, make Because you love dick jokes. I and they, they're in the same category, dick jokes and fart jokes. I have too much body shame. I'm ashamed when I take a shit. I'm ashamed when I pass wind. Really? You're not ashamed when you urinate, though. What's up with that? Urination is my specialty. Yeah, that is an incredible talent, buddy. If I could urinate like you, if I could take one thing that you can do, it would be your urination <laughs> ability. Okay. As you should. <laughs> what about my ability to play football, basketball, well, baseball? I, I, on a you, professional are, you level? have great hand eye coordination. I have to guess your vision's probably really good. I would I would think, since I've done a lot of research into this because I lost my vision going into college, and then that's probably why I didn't make it to the bigs. Um, I then had to wear contacts. It's not like your eyes, and most major leaguers have 2012 vision, and mine were corrected to 2020, but it's not the same because I'm a real eyes. Anyway, I, I think. The reason why you're naturally good at sports is because you have probably 2020 or better vision. I'm not naturally good at sports. I was messing around. I'm terrible well, at sports. I'm well, so unathletic. All I've got well, is jujitsu. I can tell you that you're sure you can't run fast, but you have really good hand eye coordination. And I wouldn't say that you're terrible at sports. I mean, I would say if you were playing a pickup basketball game with dudes your age specifically, and I can tell you because I've seen it, I've been out there, you would probably could outwork everybody even if you had never really played basketball like that because you're you just based on your, your movements as far as i could tell especially for your age you're, you're 30 now i know you might not like hearing that uh -huh. but yeah I, I do i think you have some uh some natural ability for the for the athletics okay well i'll give up youtube you hear that austin i'm done listen don't do that danny that's a mistake can i move on to some more positive news sure buddy some less theoretical talk okay 
I mean, I'm sure everybody's really interested in how it'll go if Danny plays pickup basketball in the local court. <laughs> that could be a video, dude. You know who you could collab with? I know a lot of people who have basketball YouTube channels. You well, know who messaged me today who was really excited about a piece of content he made that yeah, he swears same. doesn't suck? Mopey. It mm -hmm. sucked. The new one sucked? I entered his stupid editing contest and didn't win the $1,000. Let's break this down for the audience. Mopey, we had on the podcast a little while ago. He's a basketball YouTuber. Yeah. Infinitely more successful than Ruman, though. <laughs> this kid actually makes money. He yeah. somehow lives in a mansion. Yeah. He came on here. We played his videos. Not only did we watch and rip his videos apart, I had him point out his favorite in his mind his best video yeah. we watched that it was still the worst thing i've ever seen on youtube that didn't belong to ruman or andrew judge tv well well he, and you might have changed his the course of his life though so he messaged me today saying he's made something brilliant it's him getting dates on tinder while he's with drunk. mothers with, with mothers. mothers yeah which sounds go. promising yeah. but austin what you're telling me right now is you already watched it and it was no good Oh, I didn't. I didn't watch that one. No, he didn't watch that one. I, yeah. He did a one thousand dollar editing contest to make like a meme out of his clip, and I entered it, and I didn't win. What? So what does that have to do with a piece of content he sent us today? I didn't know you were talking about that yeah. one. Yeah. Well, listen, Austin. Jesus. His other video came out yesterday. That's I a minute mean. of the show we'll never get back. God damn it, Austin. <laughs> I apologize. Can you pull it up right now? We'll watch it live. That sounds good. It makes sense. We've already had Moby yeah. on here. There's yeah. some history. I've got other good news in the YouTube world. Mm -hmm. You know who's getting some legal firepower? Danny Mullen. You know who's got a law firm working right now on getting back up my kissing girls in Las Vegas during coronavirus video? Danny fucking Mullen? Here's what happened. Hollywood, California. Yeah. She messaged me saying, take this video down. I don't care if it's giving me exposure. My whore wife embarrassed me. She said whore. Her words, not mine. That's wow. in a message to me. She called her wife a whore. She called her wife a whore. She said, I don't want exposure at this cost. I'm copyright striking you. Do you think she, she, she hit her? What are the chances that Hollywood, California hit her wife? Her Domestic wife? Just violence, like hard. Like maybe like a bruise, she couldn't go out a couple days. Her wife looked like she weighed double what Kali would California wait. All right. So I don't think it would have worked out to him. Everything okay over there, Austin? Yeah, we're good. What are you doing with that camera? I'm just focusing it better. You're still on this one. No, thank you. Hollywood cat, there might have been some domestic abuse. So I don't want to speculate yeah. because this is a working legal case. Right. Of course, of course. So it would, so this piece of content that's on your page that she wants down, it shows her wife blatantly cheating on her after she said what? In lesbian and gay relationships, oh. is that really cheating? It's only cheating yes. if she makes out with another girl. Well, I'm outside her demo. She's not attracted to men. I'll tell you this. As a, an attractive male, I've seen the lesbians be very jealous when they have like a, you know, bi-curious girlfriend of the of the alpha man. And what mm. are you if not an alpha man? Mm. Mm. Danny, you're a tall glass of water with this baby blues. And let me tell you, she's probably looking at this thinking, you know, the last time that I put the double dildo inside of me and then used it on my girlfriend, mm -hmm. was she thinking about Danny Mullen? I think the three men in this room know the answer to that question. Yeah, I think we do. Absolutely. I think we do. So she you're was. asking if it's the biggest roast? Yeah, of her life. I think it probably is. Yeah. That video was my most viewed since the jujitsu video. Yeah, it's a big hit. It's a huge hit. Yeah. How could you not click on that right it's, now? It's a classic. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a channel classic, in my opinion. Not only is her wife cheating on her, mm -hmm. but her art is being used against her. There's nothing right. more humiliating. Yeah. And Leo, you are bringing up a good point with lesbians. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit to say on this. Okay. I'm going to try to piece together this theory I have. It's been a while since I spouted it out, and we can all work on it together. Okay. Three heads are better than one. Sure. You know the word synergy? Yes. Gay men, lesbian women. Here's how it works. Because we all know, or we all knew, gay men when we were in high school, when we were younger. How do they come out of the closet? Do they just walk up to you in the middle of Senior Square one day, no. wearing their Letterman jacket and say, hey, Steve, hey, Billy, <laughs> I'm gay. No, they don't do it like that. They tell their best friend in right. confidence that they think they might be bi. Yes, Leo. Yes. Leo knows the theory. Of course. My theory is this. If you say you're bi, you get a two-year probationary period. 
In those two years, I consider you full-blown gay. Right. You're full-blown gay for two years. Right. But if after the two years, this is what happens. I show up in a referee's jersey. I ask you, and I've got a polygraph machine. Hooked two up years, you. one day, you're in a referee's jersey. Yes. Okay. I show up with a polygraph machine, hook you up. I oh. ask you, have you gotten any pussy in the last six months? If, if you say no. If the answer is yes, I let you keep your buy card. Gotcha. I hand you not a yellow, not a red card, a buy card. Yeah. It, it, what would be a good thing to have on the buy card? Probably Just a dick and a pussy, right? A dick and a pussy, yeah. It's a yin yang, but it's yeah, a dick and a but pussy. But a dick and a pussy wrapped, yeah, like the balls are in maybe a little bit like in in the vagina. I don't know. But yeah. But Leo, let's be honest. Me and you have been around the block. Yeah. When I show up with that polygraph and I ask the guy if he's gotten laid in the last six months, after two years ago, he came out of the closet as quote unquote buy. The answer is probably going to be no. And no. he is going to be full on gay. He's going to be full on gay. Look, if you enjoy a cock even if it's once in a while you're probably going to enjoy a cock more than a vagina well based, tell you. based on a certain instagram clip and youtube video you and i just posted that means bad news for you buddy it was just one dick it was just one dick man dude that, that uh, was sucked. so fucking funny i sucked one dick I, that was fucking hilarious yeah. and your delivery of uh, 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 yeah. like the, the unsure yeah. the unsure yeah but for theatrical purposes, yeah. unsure. Yeah. I will. Uh, I, I mean, I sucked one dick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it was funny too. What the camera was on them, which was good for the reaction because it was classic as fuck. But I put my mask down so they would understand. Yeah. That I said I I sucked one dick. I don't want any ambiguity there. Here's my theory for lesbians. <laughs> That's so fuck. I still, dude. I'm, I'm telling you, I watched that thing twenty times this morning. It's a good clip. It's fucking so funny. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you put it up. Here's my theory for lesbians. Uh-huh. If a girl tells me she's a lesbian, two-year probationary period, two. But that probationary period, during those two years, I still consider her straight. Yeah. That's actually, yeah, that's that's absolutely 100%. Because, man of experience, you're in your 30s now, and I have seen it too. We can tell you your future if you're 18, 19, and you're listening. There's going to be girls that you know in high school. Some of them are going to be hot. Some of them not so much. But some of these girls are going to go into a relationship with a woman and claim and think that they are lesbians. Let's go down some reasons why they might do that. Yeah, well, maybe they were they had some abuse as a child. Stepdad grabs their ass. Maybe they had a boyfriend in high school who saw his dad hit his wife. So, you know, he hits her in high school. So Chet a unleashes a backhand. Yeah, Chet unle- unleashes a backhand. Maybe they were... You know, I don't know. Maybe they got into the deep, dark porn world and started watching too much, you know, lesbian porn. I don't know. I don't Maybe, think that one's legit, actually. actually. It could be. Maybe yeah. Donald Trump got elected president and this was their statement. This was their statement. Resist. Right. Lick pussy. Maybe they didn't, they've didn't. they never really explored their own vagina. They never purchased a vibrator. They've never had a guy that actually knew how to eat their pussy. Maybe they just had bad sexual experiences with dudes. So now they turn to a girl... And they have a good sexual experience, and then all of a sudden, they're like, oh, shit, am I, I'm a lesbian. Right. Two-year probationary period. Two years. I've known so many girls. I'm back. I've known them. They were my sister's friends. Nope. They date some butch chick because it's always cute girls, and yeah. they try out some butch. Yeah, it's a cute girl and try out a dude, basically a dude. They, they literally are dating a dude. And then I check out their Facebook, Instagram. I'm like, oh, yeah, what happened yeah. to Cindy? Right. I got a hunch that she's back on the pogo yeah. stick. Yeah, exactly. And I pull up the profile. Wouldn't you know? Yep. That's my theory. And, they, and it's usually then they, the first guy they date back, usually for some reason, it's not an American guy. It's like a foreign guy that they met in college or something. I, I know one girl in my head right now, Leo, uh-huh. who's dating a guy in Hollywood. He's not a star, mm. but he's a suit. Ooh. And he's straight from South Korea. She oh. was lesbian. There now she's dating a rich South Korean guy. That's what they do. They always go. They don't go to the American guy. We're way too, I don't know, chauvinistic. We're too alpha. I don't know. But a South Korean would probably be very like almost like a woman in the relationship. So, yeah, perfect. But, yeah, they go to foreign guys a lot. I don't know why that is, but I've seen that over and over again. And then you get them on the back. And then you get then you get them on a hookup after they break up with that guy. They'll see you at a bar and they're down to, down to bang. They're actually hypersexual, I'm bisexual you, big girls. Being a lesbian is like leasing a car. There was this girl I grew up with. Her name was Heather. She now goes by Finn. Have I talked about Finn at all? Finn, I've heard the name before. I don't remember, but yeah, I've heard I've heard you say Finn for some reason. Finn recently, and she was always cool to me, so I have no gripe with her. She is about as lesbian as you can get. She came out early in high school. She recently got knocked 
out cold in a bar fight because right. a guy was hitting on one of her friends, a lesbian. She, the guy was hitting on one yeah. of Finn's lesbian friends. So Finn went over and tried to mouth off to the guy. The guy looked her up and down, stepped back with his right foot. Oh God. Unleashed a right hand and just flatlined Finn. Jesus. Was she, is she beefy or she's big and she's, she might even be trans. Okay, so it's, okay. the guy might've had a couple Heineken. He might've thought confused. it was a guy. Yeah. But Finn back in high school, she traveled with what can only be described as a lesbian circus. Mm -hmm. And whenever a girl in my sister's friends group felt like taking a walk on the pink side, yeah. there would be Finn Whew. accompanied by six other bull dykes. Jesus. So I remember once this girl, Haley, who now follows me, hopefully she's not listening to this. Haley had a really bad breakup as Leo alluded to mm -hmm. thought she wanted to put her fingers in some snatch. And we went over to a house party at Haley's one night and then Finn and all the lesbians were there. Oh my God. They are so they okay, in my experiences I've seen lesbians be like butch lesbians be worse than dudes like attacking chicks or trying to like like I've never seen like a They're more like jealous gay, than you. Yeah, they're more jealous than me, dude. They're nuts, and that's very jealous. But also just with their uh like with their with their uh, you know, like trying to hook up with someone that's on the fence you know what i mean like when have you ever had a gay dude just fucking attack you a lot well yeah well oh, not a really? very good boy <laughs> yeah both of us have right well yeah when i went to the abbey but obviously at the abbey they all thought i was gay i've never had like a friend be like oh you ever you want to go to this side dude you you, th you ever think about it like none of that's ever really happened to me i lived in san francisco okay I've, well that's different yeah. i've for long known the secret that going to gay bars is a great strategy for picking up women and I went into those gay bars with the mindset that I'm going to get my cock grabbed 16 times tonight. Yeah, and sexually assaulted it's, for sure. It's the the uh, the power of suggestion. What the secret? Mm -hmm. uh, the law of attraction. Law of attraction. You go in knowing you're going to get your cock grabbed 16 times. You happens. usually get a grab 17. Exactly. When Finn came over to that girl Haley's house though with her lesbian circus, my buddy Nick. <laughs> He was up late just slamming shots at Jim Beam. He was one of the last soldiers alive. It's 3 a.m. One of the lesbians came out of the back room, like all fucking dizzy. She probably just got her box eaten, <laughs> wanted a nightcap. She sees Nick, takes him under the stairwell, and just sucks his dick. Really? That's another great example of why the two-year probationary period now exists. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, lesbian, lesbian girls are so confused. And bi girls usually are just experimenting, and then they switch over to the other side. And then maybe once a year, they take a girl home together or something like that. But it's... It's pretty, I think it's rare. I mean, like I had I, one of my, one of my ex-girlfriends would talk about like she, she had eaten like three, four pussies in her life. The and crazy she, one? Yeah. The crazy one. Oh. Of course. The one who's fucked Ryan Sheckler and Nigel Houston and all of them? Uh, not hundred percent confirmed, but probably more than likely. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The skateboard guys. Yes. She fucked all of them. Jesus. Not all of them, but yeah. sure. Okay. The yes. important ones. God damn it. Yes. Okay. Yes. She had eaten a few pussies. Now, uh, she would always say it in a very straight kind of way. She'd be like, you know, it doesn't taste that good or smell that good, but you know, I'd, I'd power through it. And I was like, oh, interesting. So you're really not that bi, you're not really a lesbian. Uh -huh. And she's like, yeah, you know, I've, I've had like a few, you know, I've had like more, you know, more than one hand encounters with women, but she's like, she's like, could be just experimental and not even, but not really bi. She was really, she was hypersexual. So maybe she could have fun doing that. Yeah. And I'm sure she still makes out with a girl every now and then, but. I, I don't understand how, lesbians or not lesbians random hot girls you know are so much more willing to hook up with chicks so crazy the one thing you want to say is that it's cultural taboo right it's so taboo for men to hook up with dudes right but i don't think that's the case because if there was no taboo for me to go face fuck austin behind the producer I chair i wouldn't do it i mean i would get yeah. all the excitement from cutting a hole in a watermelon and fucking that right it's the same <laughs> thing to me thanks there's nothing you're yeah, welcome Jesus, dude. hey austin why so glum over there actually i know why you're so glum you want to tell the audience about your loss yeah. yeah, so Danny made that video with the dead cat. Quit saying that like and I had anything to do with what happened. <laughs> Danny caused my cat to get eaten by a coyote. Dude, he watched the I video. I spoke to God and he told me, he said, if Danny didn't make fun of that dead cat, that wouldn't have happened. He's referring to the new Bat Soup video. There's a segment where I try to reanimate a cat corpse. I like how you put that into the story. Like, that's a major plot point. A coyote was hungry, and he saw a hairball roaming around your backyard. Well, he was hairball talking, became dinner. He was talking to me yeah. about the coyotes, and apparently they just murder and don't 
eat. They didn't eat his cat. They did the same thing to my dog when they I was in Texas. They just killed him and left him there. You my got, mom took my dog on a walk, let it off the leash for like five minutes, and then it was eaten. You gotta Honestly. Get a, you got to get a guardian animal. Yeah. You got to get... Bigger dog. A Nepolton Mastiff. Jesus. You got to get... A, That's like me as a dog. You got to get a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Yeah. I'm telling you. Who would you be if you were... What kind of, what kind of dog would you be if you were a dog? Uh, maybe a German Shepherd. Nice. Adam Fu, speaking of, Adam Fu Lod... The uh-huh. second Edward Forty Hands video, all the early Vegas videos, you guys might know. The guy I uh, double vaginal a girl with once. He, when what? he lived in Los Angeles, what an intro. he had a German Shepherd. His family was super rich and his dad was always away on business. His plan, he's going to get a police German Shepherd, get it trained how to fight and kill by some insane Serbian dude and just leave that thing in the backyard to protect the family when they're home. This yeah, is when Adam was like 10. Smart. One night, they went out back. They found 10 dead coyotes and Jesus. the German Shepherd was just wagging his tail. Just unbelievable. <laughs> they tried They tried to they fight in packs. So that motherfucker took them all down, dude. That's the Rambo of dogs, man. I Hairball. I get that. You got to get that. Hairball the German Shepherd. Man. And apparently they're really loyal and they're sweet and yeah they're great dogs German they have a uh, horrible congenital hip condition though so yeah. think that through yeah you got to get a dog that's very unflashy you got to get a toyota of a dog hmm. if we you were get the get bmw get the porsche no 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 that's like an italian Ferrari. greyhound an italian greyhound that's like getting a, yeah it's, it is like getting a ferrari that's like getting an escalade that's big yeah. Poor gas mileage. They die soon. Yeah. So my metaphor is lining up now. Yeah. It was a little shaky with the Ferrari. I thought they just got killed because they couldn't run anymore. Do they just have short lives? Uh, most of those dogs do. Anybody who's gigantic, Leo, I don't want to scare you. Yeah, that's true. We but live less. Bigger people live longer. Same with big dogs. No, they got a less. bigger heart that's doing no, more work. Live less. You said longer. Live, lo- live shorter. Shorter, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, I got you. I misspeak a lot sometimes. So, yeah, yeah, you got to get yourself the equivalent to a Kia Sorento. You got to get a little. (laughs) It has a 10 year warranty, 100,000 guaranteed. A little half Chihuahua, half Labrador, something not too flashy. Then again, that's not going to kill many coyotes. Right. But that's what indoors are for. Yeah. Just put it inside. Don't be so careful. It's a lesson learned. They probably didn't really realize that Calabasas is full of coyotes. In that area, it's barren and they have a lot of hills to survive and catch little rabbits on and shit. So. Yeah, they go around. They they fuck around. Apparently. We're gonna start trapping them and killing them. Yeah, you, it's illegal to trap them. Apparently, you're gonna start trapping them and killing them as a revenge thing. Well, I have two other cats, so it, it actually says online that uh, we have a coyote problem and that people should trap and kill them if they're down to do it. Austin is a different man since his cat died. Oh yeah, he he's on a tear right now. I I, I looked in his eyes and. I didn't see much, man. I, he's on. He has one thing on his mind, and that's revenge. Mm-hmm. What's revenge his cat's name? Really... Leo. Oh shit, that's crazy. Yeah. Did Leo you rename it after died? you got this gig? Leo yeah. the cat died. Yeah, Leo the cat died. So sad. Now it's your problem too, Leo. Yeah. It's, well, I'm gonna have to avenge his death too. Can we make a video out of this? I don't think I they'll leave this up on YouTube. Just killing coyotes I in the Calabasas it's... Hills. If it's illegal, why wouldn't they? Well, yeah, maybe the coyote is just the Danny Mullen of the uh, the coyote Leo, world. Maybe he needed some. You're some saying coy- you're saying coyote very strangely. I, I just I mix it up. It's 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 coyote, right? Okay, say wolf for me. Wolf. Say milk for me. Milk. He's right on the border of saying milk. That was the thing that I'm infuriated me most in middle school milk. and elementary school when kids said milk and when kids said wolves instead of wolves. Yeah, yeah. Moving on. I think we got some phone calls to make. We're going to give a call right now <clears throat> to Cammy, who was the almost unanimous runner-up yeah. for the Hottest Fan Contest. Nice. This was an enjoyable video to make, huh? Some chose her as the champion. Oh, it was a very enjoyable yeah, video. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, it was, uh, was, did it feel like work at all? What are you saying? Just because there were a bunch of hot chicks all but slobbering over the D-mole, yeah. it was easy to produce? That's exactly what I'm saying. That Mark Twain bit? Uh-huh. That took everything out of me. It was funny and uh, the well done. Eric Harris. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. The grainy film effect. Yeah. Everything just led up to that, Leo. Which, there was no uh, time to be sexual. I don't know if this is appropriate to ask, but well, did you have? Did you get a boner at any point in time during filming? Don't lie. Not during filming, but afterwards, after reflecting on the uh-huh. footage. Yes, and you know what? I'll confess that right now to her face. That sounds good. We'll get sexual. Cammy's Cammy's the boyfriend, right? She's got the boyfriend, Tom DeLonge, and she also has a sister who, as you may remember, flashed the camera. Ah, yes. I'm going to call her right now. She's a Los Angeles local. 
She, in fact, lives right by one of the animal shelters we filmed, oh, wow. filmed by in our last video. Well, Let's talk to her. Well, you look at that. Oh, shit. What's up? Hello? You're on the Leo and Danny show, baby. What's up, Cammie? What's up? Can you hear her, Austin? Can we hear this clearly? I, I hear it in my ears, but... People were saying Brooks was a little quiet yeah, well, Brooks last was, week. Brooks was talking a mile a minute. Okay. Well, I wonder me, why. Me yeah. Cammie. Yeah. Speak clearly into the phone, preferably not on speaker. I don't care if your boyfriend Jack, your sister's listening. This is a one-on-one -on -one conversation between you, me, and 20,000 viewers. Is Jack there? 20,000 people. I'm ready for it. Okay. Austin, are you displaying the picture of her right now on the screen? I will now. <laughs> Display it. Cammie, I'm going to be honest. You posted up a picture the other day of you by a pool, it seems. Any guy with a penis between his legs desired you when you posted that picture. If he followed you. And anybody who follows us now, I guarantee they're thinking impure thoughts. <laughs> okay. I, as you know, have a girlfriend. Yes. I can't capitalize on my attraction for you. I can't capitalize on, I think as you put it, it would take not very much work for me to get you into the sack. Uh, not very much work. I think we've been over this in the last YouTube video. Wow, sassiness, huh? Hey, this what is, is a new with audience. The, what is with the attitude, Missy? New audience. Okay, yeah, like I said, not much work. So you have a boyfriend and you it still wouldn't take much work for me to have sex with you. How does that work? Do you and Jack have an open yeah. relationship? No, but um, he's down for it, so that's the only reason why I can say that. He's down for it. Is he down for a lot of other guys to let you have sex with him? Or uh, down for a... <laughs> no, 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 just us. Not him. You. Oh, it's just you. I'm oh, sorry. It's, so it's special. It's it's just a one... It's He he has a hall... Her hall pass is you, Danny. That's that's honestly really sweet. Uh, that's great. What's his... Who does he get to sleep with, Cammy? I'm curious as well. What are you guys curious about? Who does your boyfriend get to have sex with? Since you get one person and it's Danny, who does he get to have sex with? I'm thinking it's her sister. Oh, yeah. Well, are you bringing my sister into this time? She sounds so distant. I'm afraid nobody's going to be able to hear this on the phone. I think we're going to have to get a better call in her face. Cammie, we're asking if Tom, would, if he's so desired, would he be allowed to have sex with your sister? <laughs> He'd never do that. He would never or she would never? Both of them. They're huh. both really loyal people. Oh, they're loyal people. Well, so he doesn't get to have sex with anyone, but you can have sex with Danny Mullen. Is that the? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's oh wow. Funny. Okay. Well, yeah, it's. Okay. Here's the thing. He would have sex with Danny Mullen too. That's that's what I was trying to. Oh, he. Oh, well. Okay, so he's bisexual. <laughs> Therefore, he's gay. We just went. Yeah, over we this just game. went over this, and he's bisexual, which yeah. means he's gay. Coming right here. Is Tom actually bisexual? Is he attracted no, to men? Not. No, 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 he's not. I'm, I'm fucking joking. Okay, so he he's looks at Danny. Like, mm -hmm. The only person he's ever attracted to is me, obviously. Uh -huh. So he, okay, got it. So he looks at Danny like a hero. He kind of looks at Danny like like a god, maybe. Yeah, Danny's oh. god. That's the whole point of this. Gotcha. Call, you know? Cammy, I'm very satisfied in my relationship now more than ever. <laughs> Right. What follows is going to be a completely hypothetical thought exercise. Yeah, thank you. I, I was going to say, okay. maybe we could go into some hypotheticals. Because they're not real. They're hypothetical. You, me, your sister Dizzy Izzy. Her name's Izzy, right? Yes. Well, now she's Dizzy Izzy. We go to Palm Springs for a long weekend. Yeah. You know where Palm Springs is? Yes, I literally went there last summer. A lot of oh, hotels, wow. pools, a lot of drinking. Partying. Partying, yeah. You know, yeah, you know what? Have idea. We can even bring Jack so it doesn't feel like a total betrayal. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. We get into the room. We're all drinking straight tequila. And I'm committing a misdemeanor because I'm providing straight tequila to a bunch of 18-year-olds. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. 18, that's me. Well, maybe they drank it when you didn't look, Danny. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the same lawyers defending me against Hollywood, yeah. California can exactly. get me off here, too. Exactly. Cammie? Yeah. If I tell Tom to go downstairs 
and get us some ice out of the hallway ice machine. Yeah. And then I lock the door, I throw closed the deadbolt, and I tell you and Dizzy Izzy, I'm like, hey, let's get naked, let's get in the fucking shower. Do you both follow me? Oh my God, uh, yeah. Oh my God! Dude, They're both there. They're both double, on the phone. Just ask them if they do a double blowjob then, because you, you asked. I'm ready. Hey, would the double blow would the double blowjob happen? Leo Dottavio really wants to know if once we got back into the bedroom and we toweled off, Jack pounded half heartedly once or twice at the door, then went down to the bar. He left us. Would you give me a double blowjob? You and Dizzy Izzy. Oh my God! This is really. This is really, um, this is hypothetical? Are you? It's hypothetical. I'm in a it's relationship. It's hypothetical, but, you know, it'd be cool right, if right. maybe there was some I truth really behind can. it. But if, you know, if you could answer truthfully, that'd be cool too, you know? That's true. Answer is if I'm totally single. Okay. I mean, yeah. Double blowjob while Tom's roaming around the pool aimlessly. Double trouble out here. Just for you. <laughs> so the double blowjob would happen. Yeah, man. Mm. Hmm. What if after six or seven more drinks, I decided I didn't like Tom very much? Oh no. <laughs> what if I took him in the bathroom? Poor Tom, dude. Ostensibly to quote unquote talk. Oh god. And then I just started beating the living dog shit out of him. Jesus, man. What do you think about that? Wow. No, dude, that's no. Even, I don't know. I feel like that'd be a pretty even fight. You're black belt. Uh, oh, well, there we go. Tom is a taekwondo. He's a black oh, belt shit. taekwondo. Okay, so he's got I some flashy like kicks. That he is, could land one. He's got a puncher's chance. It's the most homosexual martial art there is. It's good for the movies. <laughs> he's shaking his head no. It, taekwondo it's good for the is movies. tai chi. It's good for the movies. It's good for the movies. It's it good is. for stunt work. It is good for stunt work. Well, yeah. we'll be in a bathroom, first of all. Close quarters. So Tom's taekwondo is going to count for not. Make him simultane- simultaneously say that they would give you a double blowjob. Like... He would give you a double blowjob. I like that. That sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Cammy and Izzy. Yeah. yeah, this is good. I content. need you girls to quit arguing amongst yourselves. I want you to both okay. sound off into the phone right now. I want you to say, as I count you down, we would both suck your dick at the same time, Danny. Okay? <laughs> okay? After I count you down. It's going to go like this. It's going to go three, two, one. We would both suck your dick at the same time, Danny. That's how it's going to go. You okay. girls ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. We would both try your dick at the same time, Danny. <laughs> this may be the highlight of my life. This is satisfying. To think that the first episode of this podcast it was titled The Warthog. How far you've come, buddy. Leo brings up a good point. How far you've come. Cammy and Izzy, you realize less than 365 days ago, <laughs> I was having sex with an obese woman. Really? Yeah. That was a thing. I was doing the same thing. I was, I was fucking an obese person, too. Well, it happens. You were fucking an obese person? Well, I was with a guy, more than likely. I was. My ex-boyfriend. He was obese. Were you fat, too? Why was your self-esteem so low a year ago? I don't know. I was in high school. I was, uh, you know. I, I don't know. A, oh, man. Danny. How much did he you weigh? He was, uh, wow. Well, he was obese. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on. A little bit overweight, a lot overweight, or literally obese? Was he medically obese? Anyway. What? Well, he was obese. I think he like over definitely doubled my my body size for sure. Like my body weight for sure. Double, double your body weight? You weigh hundred pounds, I, I so he was two hundred pounds? Of, people would people would ask me, Oh, would he crush you during sex? Oh god. They would hold up their pinky saying, Oh, this is this is his pinky, this is his dick size. Jesus. That kind of shit like that. Poor guy. Is he okay? I don't care if he's okay. I hope he dropped dead. Jesus. Cammy, what I want to know is what was the experience like when you were giving him oral sex? Uh, Sweaty? God, smelly? Kind of... <laughs> Danny? What? Huh? It was smelly. Oh, oh my God. It was sweaty. He got very sweaty. Oh, oh God. This is disgusting. Very uncomfortable. And then did his That's dick cool. look smaller because there were pads of fat surrounding the base of the penis? Did you have to push up his fat? It's worse. I didn't know his actual dick size because he had a, it looked as though there was a pillow. Oh, God. A this a is so disgusting. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. A pillow around his dick. 
Okay. Okay. The pillow around his dick, sweaty. I don't know how it feels. I don't know how Tom feels about following this up. I thought he was had got himself a really good woman, but it seems that anybody can get themselves a you, can Oh, stop it. That is not what that, that means. That was Izzy. So Izzy, Izzy. Are very oh, I can't tell. So Izzy's fucking a I fat guy. Our voices sound the same. No, this is, this is Izzy talking. Oh, well, how the fuck is I supposed to know that? Nobody at home knows. All right, girls. Yeah, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll clarify. This is Cam. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> girls, we're going to have to call you back another time. We got to move on to cameraman Nico. Some business needs settling there. Have a good day, guys. Right. Tell Tom we said hi. Our best regards. And tell Izzy sure. to uh-huh. stop fucking fat guys. Yeah. What did he say? Stop fucking fat guys. Stop fucking fat guys. It's okay. You're not with him anymore, right? We're good. I'm always gone for good. I'm fucking different people now. Different people. As in multiple. People. Uh, I mean, technically, yeah. When's the last time you got laid? Uh, beginning of quarantine, unfortunately. Hmm. It's not cool. You're my woman now. Condom or no condom? Condom or no condom? Oh, man. All right, Danny. No, wait, condom or no condom? This is getting overwhelming, girls. I'm sorry. We'll talk to you some other time. No worries. Feel free to call anytime. Later, girls. That was tough. The audio was terrible. Yeah. There were multiple voices. Oh, well, I think that they heard the double, the, the same time thing. So that's good. That's important. Uh, hopefully that made the rest of the call worth it. That's the next job, Austin. We got to get a real call system going. Skype. 100%. If we get a house phone with a speaker, that'd be easy to do. That sounds like a yeah, lot of work for lot the lot same work, exact yeah. effect. Or, I mean, I guess they would call over Skype. Is the sound over the the uh, laptop as well? I better, don't know. Right? We'll let this guy take care of it. Yeah, I'll just go to I'll go to Fry's and get what I need to do it. I don't have enough mental cool, real estate to uh, dedicate to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah we'll talk about it. But either maybe like what if, what if we just simplify it to a Skype like a laptop with a computer speaker? Would that already be better? No. I think we need to get it hooked in through the headphones, through the mics. Through the mics. Because right now, when I'm talking to this person or mm. you're talking to this person, mm. they can't hear the person who doesn't have the no, phone up to their yeah. mouth. Yeah, a computer yeah. speaker is going to be just as sketchy yeah. with a sound floating through the room. Yeah. The acoustics will be awful. So I'm thinking a little uh, two chairs facing each other with a table in the middle. What do you think? Like a little table. We got to get it sorted table? out properly. Yeah, yeah. Either way, we can't do the speaker phone idea. It was yeah, a bad yeah. idea, Liam. It wasn't the worst idea, but okay, fine. That's true. It wasn't the worst idea. It was something that produces sound. Well, anyway, will you be masturbating to that later? I'm curious. No. You're such a fucking liar, dude. No, maybe. Yeah, no. you are. Yeah, you are. I did, no? I did jerk off to... To what? To one of... I'll admit this. Oh, God. I jerked off to one of Cammie's sister's photos. Okay. So, Izzy's. Yeah. Izzy. You jerked off to one of her pictures? I'm going to take that jerk off back because now I know she fucks fat guys. Well, she fucked one fat guy. Give her a break. These girls. I don't care. You know. I don't they, need that. They're growing as human beings. They're young. They don't know what's going on right now. That tarnishes my reputation. Yeah, well, I get it. I get it. Yes. Me sharing a fantasy with a girl who shared a bed with a fat so is not good. I feel like, yeah, I mean, I mean, if you're going to start this this whole movement, I feel like you, you need to have some a talk with them. They need to they need to sign something what they can and cannot disclose to other people. What uh, you know, they they should pro- they should say they're virgins, except for you. So yeah. things like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Why not? I want to be like the guy who flew the plane into the World Trade Center. Seventy two virgins is all I want. It's all I'll get. Jesus. Is it 72? 72. Well, yeah, there's... I'm, a, I'm Italian. I just, I just want 10 sluts up there, you know? You don't want 10 sluts. Okay, I don't want 10 sluts. You're so lying. I am. I'd take the 72 virgins, too. It'd be fun. You want nine sluts to blow you in a car, yeah. and then one girl who's not a slut... Exactly. ...so you can get blown behind her back. What's that mean? Jesus. <laughs> Christ, man. I mean, in heaven. It's heaven, though. It's you can heaven, do anything dude. you want. In heaven, sure. Yes. In heaven, that's exactly what I would want. If you make it into heaven, you don't have to be a good guy anymore. You can do whatever you, you want. You can do whatever you want. Yes. So, so ten. I have ten girls blow. No, nine girls blowing me, and uh-huh. I'm, I'm loyal to the one, but she has no idea. What does the word loyal mean yeah, if that's yeah, exactly. the case? No. Well, yeah, yeah. No, no. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You described uh, some of my past relationships for sure, but... uh the girl hey, fucked Ryan Sheckler. Yeah, she fucked Ryan Sheckler. If I had to get blown loyalty. by my neighbor, I got blown by my neighbor. You know what happened? His caballerial kickflips aren't even that good. Yeah, I got blown by the neighbor that you hooked up with. That one. That one used to blow me all the time. It's mm-hmm. great. 
Yeah, we've gone over her a yeah, couple yeah, times. Yeah, we've gone over her for sure. So you want to talk about Nico now? Yeah, man. Nico, you know, listen, I've been, I to shoot the behind the scenes, which kind of sucks because I actually forgot to shoot some more behind the scenes because I was, I got a little too, I drank a few white claws. So I'm hanging out and um, you look, I'm looking at the relationships. That's what I look at. You know, I'm, I'm an actor. I like to study human behavior. Look, Ian and Danny, they have some nice conversations back and forth. They're talking, they're talking comedy. Ian is they're the talking. guy who's been pinch hitting his cameraman. Yeah, he's been pinch hitting his cameraman. Nico wasn't allowed to leave his house because yeah. of quarantine. Yeah. He lives with his parents. They wouldn't let him out. So look, Ian's got, he's got a little more money. He's, he, has, he has a steady job. He's got some nice lenses. He's watched a lot of sp- weird specials that him and Danny bond over comedy specials comedy specials he understands classic rock he understands the punk rock that Danny likes look I'm not saying that Nico's gone or his job's in jeopardy or anything like that all I'm saying is Ian's a good an asset that has come to fruition for the channel and He's a good guy. He's come to many of my shows. I have a relationship with him too. We uh, we like musical theater. We like we're big movie buffs, which Danny isn't as much. And and it's cool. He has like something in common with both of us, and um, definitely understands our humor. And even wants to do open mics with me. So what I'm saying is, the guy's a, the guy's cool. Here's the situation. Yeah, this is like if you graduate college, you and your girlfriend are at the same school. You move back to your hometown and she goes to medical school Mm. and there's a handsome guy in her med school class. Oh, God, he's six, three. He works out before every. Well, he works out in the morning because that's the only time he has. But he's fucking gets after it in spin class and his abs are popping. He's got naturally veiny arms. He went to Princeton. He went to Princeton. He's got a big cock. Ian is that guy. Right. I'm the chick. The channel is the chick. Right. And Nico is the kid who's home still after graduating. Working at an Olive Garden as a waiter. Right, right. So this is how the movie begins. And look, I'm not going to tell you that the end isn't going to end with Nico being victorious. But he's got, he's now he has some challenges ahead of him. So Nico's got to make a choice. I was thinking about calling him and fake firing him. I don't know. Is that a good idea? Should we fake fire him? You can fake. Here's the thing. I can't fake fire him because I told him about six hours ago yeah. that he's not fired. So talk to talk to us about what he's been kind of saying to you. Is he insecure? Like what's going on with with Nico? He's really insecure about what's going on. Yeah. I told him this weekend. We went out and shot another worst town in America type video. Austin looks so sad over there over his dead cat. I'm trying to Austin, ignore Leo, him. dude, Leo's in heaven fucking massive amounts of pussy. Literal, literal pussy. I want Austin to put a mask on so I can't see his sad face. <sighs> I'm, I didn't sleep but like three hours last night too. So it's I'm really okay. Tired. I'm trying to look like peppy. Cap? Nah, dude. My parents were arguing. That happens, dude. We gotta get back it's on the track. It's the worst. All right. I told Nico... Last weekend or last week before we went and shot our new worst town in America. Hey, right now there's a smudge on your lens. that has been there for a while. All the camera lens cleaning places are closed. Understandably, he couldn't get a drone, which I was trying to get. And then also he doesn't have any UV filters, which made the new Slab City video look so excellent. Mm. And he hasn't shot in 4K for me like Ian has already done on the Slab City video. This video is based on the scenery, the beauty of the desert. I went with the guy whose camera was going to look better. That's, yeah, that's one of his assets. But I told Nico, hey, man, you were out. I needed somebody to sub in. Now I'm just, I was in the groove with him for this video, so I just brought him out a second day. I'm not going to fire you. I'm not going to get rid of you. I don't do that. I told him that earlier. Oh, gotcha. So we can't prank him, unfortunately. I was thinking bits. You were thinking kindness. Which most people never see, but I think we can do this. I think should I just call him and kind of just talk a little shit? Just tell him, just make him feel more insecure about Ian. Is that is that even? I think you play full on bad cop. Right. I don't think you talk shit. I think you advocate. I just kind of ask him how he's feeling about that. How he no, feels about I say Ian. I say you advocate for his firing. <laughs> I say you act enraged. Remember what I told you? Remember what we talked about when we were filming the rent collection bit? Oh, it worked better when we came in yeah. all fire and brimstone. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a cut that's going to be up on Patreon. It didn't make the final video mm-hmm. where we went to an animal shelter and we were hesitant and trying to be logical about collecting this fake rent mm-hmm. from this fake overdue bill. The way to go in is just to go in and scream and swing yeah. your cane around. The same here. Call him up and be like, you know what? I think Ian's better than you. 
Oh, I like hanging out with him more. Like I the, want you the off last, the squad, the and I'll be like, no, shot. no. All right, let's fucking do it, dude. And I won't feel bad because I already told him today he's not fired. Danny was the good guy for once. I gotta get into character. This motherfucker. Better answer. He better fucking answer. Just Yell, Nico, you're fired. First thing. Right. Yell it. All right. You have reached the voicemail. Killing our radio show. <sighs> yes. You know who's in the hospital right now? Fan Jerry with kidney stones. What? Dude, that sucks. That means he's not drinking enough water, but there's other reasons. Wait, wait, wait. Might, wait, might wait, have been wait. some drug use. Leo. What? Mike's hard lemonades don't count as water? No. Yeah, he's definitely not drinking know. enough water, man. Uh, that I've, sucks. That's sort of like the, the most painful thing ever. Most clo- the closest thing to uh, childbirth apparently is passing a stone. They give him some pills. He's fine. They give him some pills. That's it. I don't know. I'm just made that up. I'm assuming so. Yeah, no, they, power- what they do, what they do is they they laser them uh, out. If they're not, if they haven't, if he didn't pass one, or if you passed one and then went and they saw more. Then they laser them, and then he, they still might pass them because they'll break off and like go through the and through anyway. But he's a little young to to be having that issue. He should definitely watch out. I thought I had kids, kidney stones one time, and then um, I went to the doctor. I don't drink I don't drink enough water too, but I, I drink more. I've been drinking a lot more. But yeah, I, that's uh, interesting to say the least. What do you mean to say the least? I just it's, just, it's just it's some that people say, Danny. All right. Okay. Okay. I just want to see where you're going with that. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean? Are you, do you think I'm talking shit about Fangieri? No, no, no. That's not what I thought. I would only talk shit about someone that's you know has a lot more going for them than me. Now I'm talking shit about Fangieri. <laughs> it's fucked up. Fangieri has a he makes more money than me, and he has a great channel that oftentimes gets more views than me. Does he actually make more money than you? I don't know. Nah, Through yeah, your I sugar bottle? I, I would say on the books he makes more money than me. Uh huh. Well, on the books you make about five dollars USD. Yeah. Annually, yeah. Pretty Off much. the books, though, it's a different story. Off the books, it's a different story. We won't Nobody talk about that. that. Yeah, we can't talk about that. Well, you know, but uh, you know, yeah, I'm making some investments in the stock market now, so I'm going to clean up some of that. Uh, I got to get my money back straightened out now in too. The, in the stock this market, weekend, or just overall, or just because overall, this weekend when I hang out with my girlfriend, mm-hmm. you spend some money. It's like a Mr. Restaurateur. Well, is that a guy who goes to restaurants or opens restaurants? That's uh, I didn't open any. I just go to a lot. Yeah, that's that's an opening. But no, dude, what is what is better in my what is better than eating like a good food with a beautiful girl? There's nothing better. Getting hammered while eating good food with a beautiful girl, and then going to a hotel room, yeah, well, where you can where you can come on the lampshade and somebody else cleans it up. That's better than doing it in your room. Hundred percent. I'll tell you this, dude. You want a great? uh, Me and my girlfriend spent a night at the Hilton. No, the Marriott in Woodland Hills. Dude, they have phenomenal room service. It's pretty inexpensive, and the the night was like a hundred and twenty dollars. And it's it's in Woodland Hills, but I'm telling you, if you want that experience where you can just go and fuck around, and it's even got a view and everything, it's it was pretty pretty awesome. It's probably even cheaper than that right now. Yeah. But yeah, it's fun. Okay, I highly recommend it if you just need to, you know, uh, go in town and okay, yeah, you know, I'll go over there and I'll stick the TV her remote ass. up her ass. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say something about her asshole. I she knew comes it. over here this weekend. There's no food. She says she's hungry. Mm -hmm. We're watching the Bob Dylan documentary on Netflix because I'm better than everybody. Yeah, sure. Of course. Of course you are. You sick fuck. She wants food. All there are is is orange chicken from Trader Joe's in my freezer. I have it left over. That's phenomenal, though. That's really good stuff. I have it left over from my quarantine panic shopping. I've never prepared it, Leo. Wait a second. You've eaten. Wait, that was the first time. You've never eaten the orange chicken from Trader Joe's? I don't think so. I think it's better than any orange chicken I've ever tasted. Let me finish my story. I'm sorry. Now I'm thinking about the fucking orange chicken, dude. No, no. It's so good. I'm not mad at you, but I'm just going to hint at a very different outcome than what you think is going to happen. So I, I fucking panic. I'm like, I can't just feed this bitch orange chicken. I got to have some sort of base to the protein. Oh, that's sweet. So thank you. Calling her a bitch or saying I need some base. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's sweet that you wanted to make a nice meal for her. The thought behind it. The thought behind it. Yeah. It was I really cute. rip open a bag of riced cauliflower. I pour this all into a pan. Oh, God. The orange chicken. The orange chicken sauce. The riced cauliflower. Mm-hmm. I started heating it up. I get distracted. Noah comes in. He's mm. fucking high as shit. He's talking about his famous boss. Mm. I get distracted. I look down. 
I burned the entire meal. Oh, God. It's done, huh? Also, uh, I think, though, it's better in the oven, the orange chicken, by the way. She told me that afterwards. Yeah. It was a little burned, though. I'm exaggerating yeah. when I say it was completely toast. It wasn't mm-hmm. really blackened. It was definitely the the brilliance of the orange mm-hmm. was gone. Mm-hmm. It didn't look like one of those goldfishes you would buy. Right. That's how it looks on the package. Mm-hmm. I bring it out to her. She starts forking a couple bites. She didn't like it. I could see in her face just not even like, oh, this doesn't taste great, but it's mm-hmm. sustenance, so I'm going to continue. Every bite is a dagger or into her esophagus. Mm-hmm. She hated it. I know my girlfriend's the same, man. They're spoiled little bastard young girls that go to fucking that that think it's everything's come just fucking they they can't they don't know how to survive like us, Danny. They're a new generation. They live yeah. in Santa Barbara, they're yeah. by the beach. They think yeah. the world's just fucking it's, true. it's gonna be beautiful all the time. Every now and then you gotta eat some burnt shit, dude. And I scarfed it down right after and I right. thought, hey, that wasn't that bad. That wasn't that bad. Yeah, that happens all the time. I have endless amounts of food in my house, but I have to we have to go out and get some food or like get in certain ingredients so she can prepare it a certain way to enjoy it, which is fine. She's a good cook. She's been cooking a lot, my girlfriend, but still, they're spoiled. These girls are spoiled rotten. I had to post mate some Chipotle. There it is. I had to pull, was it 20, 25 pull up, bucks? Pull up old Papa Mullen's credit card. Mm-hmm. It was $85. That was, I just wanted to make it sound like it was more dramatic Jesus. than it was. I hope it was only twenty. I'm, I'm thinking with the delivery and all that, it's probably with the tax. It, it was it, twenty two bucks. Okay, yeah, over twenty, which is kind of yeah, it's, it should be sixteen. So they're charging you basically. There is always an armada of hidden fees. Oh yeah. Same with hotels. You're mentioning that Woodland yeah. Hotels. I'm sure that cost $379 once you hit the resort fee. Once you hit the resort fee or something like that. There was no resort fee there. Man. I'm telling you, that's one of the best spots because I spent a lot of times in hotels this last year. So I could tell you that that was one of the better deals. Right. But uh, yes, right. I agree. They do rip you off at hotels, but it's also worth it for me. I love it. Okay. I am going to use the pillowcase as a condom. When I there can. it is. Yeah. I was talking to Mia. I don't know if this is a move before. I feel like I've heard about it. When you're on the beach with your girlfriend and you mm-hmm. want to have sex with her, mm-hmm. so you put it in her vagina, mm-hmm. presumably the vagina is wet, then you pull out and you dip it into the dry sand. That is not a move. And Who then the you fuck? put it back what in her the pussy. What the fuck is that? No, that's a yeast <laughs> infection, buddy. I that named, is a yeasty beastie, as the girls call it. I named it the Santa Barbara sand crab. What is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> Austin, that's the first time Austin's gotten any genuine joy today. <laughs> Santa Barbara sand crab? You should all try it out. So you did this to her. Of course. You know, the sand in Santa Barbara is full of tar and just gross shit. I can't imagine anything more devastating than putting in. It's like the equivalent to one of those chocolate bananas with peanuts all over it. Yes. Like putting that up a girl's pussy. Yes, absolutely. I didn't do it. But eventually I want to go fuck up this Woodland Hills Hotel. You know what else we did this weekend? (laughs) What? I went touring because Danny Mullen, he knows you got to dream big in order to achieve big. Mm -hmm. You went what? Touring? We went and toured the Bel oh, Air touring. Hills. Really? With who? With Mia. Just Mia. Just, Mia. You, just, you guys just drove around the Bel Air Hills? And I felt like such an imposter mm-hmm. slash intruder. Mm-hmm. Everybody we drove by, mm-hmm. the joggers, the people just in the front yard with the hose, I waved at all of them to gauge nice. their reactions. I think I got one wave back out wow. of 10 waves. Wow. That's a video idea that I always thought would be funny because when I did real estate, all those neighborhoods up there on every Tuesday and Thursday have brokers open, which are only available. Like if you know that as a, you know, as a realtor, you'll know that all the realtors are going to go look at the house to see if they have clients that like it. So me and you could show up and just be really like at a for sale you know, house in the hills. At a for sale house in the hills. I'm talking, we'd have access to prop to endless amounts, probably at any time in Bel Air, there'll probably be 25 homes for sale. We could, we could go into 25 homes uh-huh. and it's usually between like two and four, like two and five, there'll be three hours where we could just go it's a perfect film day almost. Tell them about our and, plans for the yeah, house. And tell them about our plans for the house or like talk shit or yeah. be dressed in fur coats. Yeah. Anything. Just, There's endless amounts of ideas we could do with that. So listen, mm-hmm. I'm from the Southwest. Yeah. I got this pet. He's a yak. Yeah. He's like a sheep with big horns. I want him to live inside with me. Can this be the yak room right here? There we go, dude. There we go. You could do it. Dude, so many characters in there. It'd be great. And then they'll have to kind of, we could say we're filming it. Because we, well, we'd actually be allowed to use the camera if we pretend to be realtors. We could say like, hmm, I don't know, it's a little small for my client. Do you know uh, Kim Jong-un? I don't know. You know what I mean? We could be representing a crazy client yeah, or something like that. But yeah, we could, uh, we would be able to film openly if that, because we'd be doing it for our client. Mm-hmm. 
Otherwise, we'd have to do the hidden camera for that. But I think it'd be pretty easy because Ian could just be in there hanging out a lot. There's always there's always look film at equipment. that subconsciously or not subconsciously, mm. just oh, without shit. even thinking about it. Leo says Ian, not Nico. Oh, fuck, I'm sorry, Nico. I do think you have a lot of talent for in front of the camera, though. I'm not gonna lie. I think you're a great actor. I think you're very funny, and I think that you have a future. He's got a video coming up. He's starring this weekend in a video. Really? Yeah, he's starring. We'll talk about wow. it. We'll see, that's a little see teaser if you responded right now. to me. But uh, been, he called me three times. He's uh, he's 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 getting crazy. He even FaceTimed me. Called you back, you fuck. Look at this. Where uh, were we though? I think you're gonna call him right now, and All you're right. just gonna yell your fire at the top of your lungs. Right. Do it over here. Maybe he won't believe you if you just yell, "You're fired." He's not gonna believe me. Fire and brimstone, though. Hello. You're fired. I'm fired? Yeah, you're fucking fired, dude. For what? Well. From dog walking. What do you think, jerk off? Listen, let me ask you a question, Nico. All right. Let's say, do you know who, do you know who Alex Rodriguez is? Like A-Rod? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, A-Rod. Do you know who A-Rod is? Follows me yeah, on Instagram. Yeah, I, I know of him. I know he's a lot on the Yankees. Right, he was on the Yankees. What? Let's say, let's say. There was a team down the street from your house. Baseball team, right, Nico? You've played a little baseball before, right? I played T-ball. All right, so you played T-ball. So let's say this team has a tryout, right, for their new shortstop. You following me? Yeah, so I'm a shortstop. Wait, this team l- listen, this is, I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to answer honestly. You show up to the tryout, right, and it's okay. you – the line it goes the line starts here and you make it first and then the guy behind you comes up gets out of his fucking bentley he strolls over to you is alex rodriguez all right he's trying out for the same team as you what kind of chance do you have to make it on that club as the starting shortstop and uh well i i could be just as good as alex rodriguez i don't know that yet <laughs> Are you out of your mind? He's a Hall of Famer. He literally hit 700 home runs. How could you? Okay. Maybe as a shortstop, I could be just as good. What are we talking about? Let's talk about filming. This was the analogy that I was trying to make, all right? Uh, Listen, there's a new Alex Rodriguez in town, buddy. And his name is Ian. How do you feel about that? There's no bad blood at all. I mean... Oh really? So you're we've always talked about interchanging filmers since I really? first started with them a gotcha. year, gotcha. maybe two ago. Mm-hmm. And it's never been a problem. I what would you say? What would you to... say if I said that Ian is a little better? He's a little he's he's like you on steroids. Oh stop. And what if I said that Ian maybe <laughs> didn't have didn't have very much, you know, positive feedback about your uh, your skills and your uh, and your filming. What what if I said that Ian basically thinks that you're a faggot? He said that in confidence, Leo. That was not for <laughs> you to leak on the air right now. I'm sorry. He he insulted your conf- your your uh, your he insulted your intelligence, Nico. And I didn't feel great about it. But you know, listen, this is about the channel's growth. All right. So how do you what do you what do you how are you feeling right now? That's my question. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know who Ian is. I don't spend a lot of time with him, but from the few times I've spent with him, yeah. maybe he would have some constructive feedback on what I do. Mm-hmm. But I don't think he would include the word faggot there. <laughs> He's quite a homophobe. Hey, Nico. He is a homophobe. It's crazy. Nico, I don't want to get too technical here about shutter speeds, about lens brightness, but he did say you've had that smudge on your lens for so long that he thinks there's probably a smudge on your frontal lobe. (laughs) (laughs) He thinks you're stupid for having it on there. He actually made that joke because he... he, he, Well, well, I see when Jared's not here, you hate when people accept it, so I'm going to defend my stance. The last shoe we had together was the one where I bought the cleaning kit and tried to clean it. And then after that shoot, hmm. you said that it was still on there. 
He, uh, and then all the Corona shit hit. He says that uh, that he knew that you were going to make up some excuse uh, for your for your uh, lack of of, uh, of ability to to get it cleaned. He said that he already knew that this was going to be your response, and that you're very very easy to figure out, and that he would not only beat you in a battle of wits, mm. but that if you two went to film school, he would be the Scorsese to you being the guy that has to shoot Cinemax films that usually star guys like me. He said that at your best, you could maybe shoot Cinemax films. I, and, I heard that he yeah. said Nico would be shooting snuff films. Right. Even worse. That's Shit that's on the ceiling. dark web. Like you're going to Mexico to, to, to like film some cartel guy, stab a guy in the heart for a message to some other cartel. That's what he said you'd be filming. And you'd be paid in free admission to a donkey show. Right. He, he said that you'd well, be... What? He said that you would be paid for that snuff film in free admission to a donkey show in Tijuana, Mexico. Which is really bad considering film school is going to set you back 150 grand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, need, you need some money. Not, said, not just tickets to recreational he venues. Said, he said that you would take 35 years to pay back the loan <laughs> <laughs> from film school. And. <laughs> when you you would have a small celebration at the end when you finally paid it off and you might even and, and the video and it would be your best video but it would only be a minute and 30 seconds on instagram and that would be that would be the highlight of your of your career did he really say this was he was Ian just on the phone before me on here yeah yeah dude. it's all gonna be on record for you to review Ian's an articulate guy, especially when he gets cooking up with a couple cocktails in the evening. He when did. He listen, what? listen, you know, do you realize that Ian does stand up and not now? We're not talking about fucking this. Too bad hearsed. it was a hearse. Yeah, we're not talking about too bad it was a hearse. That's a legendary joke. Listen, it's a legendary, it's a legendary joke. Like that's the that's Chris legendary, Rock. Yeah. Like that's the Chris Rock fucking N word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. that legendary. Oh, uh, it's it's such a legendary joke. Like but that's, listen, that's Doug Stanhope's nationalism yeah. bit. Shut up. Yeah, come on, Nix. Listen, so yeah, he. He's done improv. He's done comedy. So, yeah, he was able to riff, and he roasted you pretty badly. And, and this is the kind of stuff that he was saying, man. He was saying that uh, he was saying that your liver is basically <laughs> exactly your liver. Your, the health of your liver is the level of talent that you have. Yeah. Which is low. Yeah. Your liver looks like a charred your wiffle ball. <laughs> killing it. This past weekend, it's been a month since I've had any alcohol. Okay, that's good. That's, that's because good. the we doctor told him his liver was going to get out if he kept drinking. Did you go to the doctor? What? Did you go to the doctor? No. All right. Well, hey, listen. This was on medical last advice. Year, and listen. Physical, oh, God. I physical last year, and he said that my liver is crushing it. He said I should live to be a... 85. You sure that was a doctor, not one of your stoned friends? Is that bro? Not, your liver is fucking crushing. Your liver, your your doctor, your fucking doctor, who's probably in his sixties or seventies, as most doctors are, came up to you and said, "Your liver is <laughs> crushing it." You expect us to believe that, dude? He showed me all the uh, stats from my book work, and I I was even shocked by it. I mean, I do exercise, mm. but the fact is, my alcohol mm. intake—I felt like it was it would have some kind of bad. Repercussions. Uh, listen, body, I, I, but so far it hasn't. Listen, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to get too deep into your liver because Ian said something else, and I'm gonna let Danny tell you this one because I, it hurt. It bothers me. Listen, what? Listen, he he said something about Jill. He said, yeah, he said something about Jill. Danny, mm-hmm. do you want to do you want to tell him? Yeah, I got it. All right. Listen, we just because you have to respond to this shit, so. You're going to see it on the video, and we want to give you a heads up, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nico, do you know who Salman Rushdie is? Do I know who, who is? Salman Rushdie. He's a famous author. He wrote something called The Satanic Verses. The Crown Prince of Iran declared a fatwa on him. It, it, it was an order for all Muslims, all faithful around the world, to, if given the opportunity, take Salman's life. Salman Rushdie in addition to that, is famous for dating hopelessly beautiful women way, way out of his league. <laughs> he said, Ian said, that you remind him of Salman Rushdie 
because your girlfriend's way out of your fucking league. Except unlike Solomon, you have no talent. <laughs> See, and, and it's so great well, because he was able to make an intellectual, you know, analogy with, with you and Jill. Like he, he was able to bring in this figure that I have no idea. I've never heard of him before. And I hey, learned, I you, actually did research Austin, for hours about this. Austin, can you pull up Salman Rushdie right now with his girlfriend? Pull up or Salman with, Rushdie. With one of his wives? Yeah. So listen, so we're not going to say that it was one of the best performances we've had on this podcast, but Ian was obviously prepared. He's been thinking about these things and we want to know you know how you're feeling about this but also do you have a response or do you want to say anything to ian well okay i'm gonna answer this in two parts Ooh. oh if shit I, here we go two-part answer if i can keep these thoughts in my head so i am not going to say anything about ian one i don't know if this is true because i know you guys so well Two, oh, stop you took trust shots shut ian up dude this is legit stuff out there for me to critique what do you mean? I don't think I don't think he has anything out there for me to look at of what he's done besides a couple videos from Danny. He's got Slab City, baby. That's all you need to see. Listen, buddy, he's I did got watch it. He's got a it's classic. Not that I wasn't impressed, but if I can say it seems like Danny just likes a tighter focus on the camera. So he doesn't like the super wide lens that I use. He wants something a little closer and narrower to give it that cinematic feel. I want your camera to make love to my pretty face. No more of that zoomed out bullshit you've been throwing around, Nico. Do you think... Do you but think it, in my head, it's so much... Like, I look at some of the videos, you say, like, Nate was steady, and he wasn't. He was, like, moving around a little more. So, so now you're dragging Nate into this? Nate's an honorable man. Yeah, yeah. Why, why are we talking shit about Nate, dude? We all love Nate. I didn't talk shit about him. I didn't say anything. Danny said, look at Nate's videos, and... Nate, good cinematographer. Cover, like Danny said, I have no clue how he did it, but Danny said he has a better camera than me, the next generation. He even said... But... Yeah. It's close. Let me talk... It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Now we're getting technical. Nico, we're fucking with you, obviously. Ian said none of this, okay? <laughs> You think Ian really <laughs> just like we passed him the joint on the drive back from Imperial he's, County? He's, he's just, like, listen, this fucking faggot Nico. You know Solomon Rushdie, the fat guy with the hot wives and the fatwa? That's Nico, okay? Oh, that's, that's so funny. That's like something that he could come up with, though. I don't, I, think, I don't know enough to refute that part, but I did say he would not call me a faggot. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> well, we don't know that for we sure. We don't know that for sure. Listen, Nico. All right. All right. It's okay, Nico. What I said to you, what did I say to you this morning? I texted you this morning, which made this bit a little harder to pull off because you knew you weren't actually fired. What did I say, though? You, I mean, I can, I can look it up. You paraphrase it. Can You can't paraphrase it. We're doing radio here. You're right. You're right, Leo. Yeah. I, 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 I am. I'll do it real quick. Do it real quick. You said that. Hey, dude, uh, are you able to film this weekend as a character, not a filmer? And then you just went into stuff about how I was like, hey, am I fired like from shooting? And you're like, no, like you're just going to keep interchanging us if the time works right. And he has better equipment and stuff, which makes it better for you to film the uh, worst town in America. What else That's did I say? Was, you said um, you don't kick people out, fire them or fire them. Oh. And um, sweet. That I've been out of the game for a little bit, and I couldn't work, so that's why Ian's been subbed in. That's right. And listen, buddy. Maybe this will put a little competitive pressure on you because Ian does have a nice setup. He's been doing some good stuff in 4K. I said this when we were doing the Edward Forty Hands video. That Tom Brady, back when he played for the Patriots was definitely afraid of letting anybody else walk onto the field and take a snap in his place. Yeah. If he had a sprained ankle, tough shit. He put some ice on it, he took an aspirin. If he had a concussion, he slipped the doctor $1,000 to clear him. He did not get off the fucking field, okay? Because he did for a little bit, and Jimmy Garoppolo was throwing dime balls, and it made people start talking about trading Brady. Yeah. Nico, when you... Let somebody else like Ian take snaps. It's always a little perilous. 
But don't worry. I'm looking out for you, buddy. And hopefully you can learn from some of the stuff Ian was doing. Well, we do have our cameras on practically the same setting. But just to say one more thing. What? When before this na- this worldwide, listen, specified worldwide pandemic that some people may not take as serious as others, anyone can believe what they want, but when else have I not been there for your show? You've always been there, of course, Nico. Of course. But I'm saying, while I'm out in Las Vegas on the front lines, quiet, quiet. While I'm out there in Las Vegas on the front lines, making out with Hollywood, California's wife, yeah. how come you get to be hanging out in your parents' house in your underwear, eating cap and crunch? It's bullshit. Dude, I felt horrible. Cause you had Corona or you felt emotionally horrible? No, I felt, okay, no, like, did you say emo- emotionally? I felt bad. Because, no. like, I want to, dude, I like filming for you. Like I said, I've all, ever since you told me that story about Tom Brady, you've told me that for years. I have remembered that. And that's honestly. Got to keep I mean, the fear. Wanted, Nigo, Nigo, the now fear let, me, let me ask you a question, though. That has kept me wanting to yeah. let you know about it. Going on Watch this. Okay. Listen, but Nico. Then, dude, this and what am I supposed to do? I, I yeah, totally I'm understand where you're coming from. I totally understand where you're coming from. But I, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, buddy. Have you ever read The Alchemist? I told you to read it a long time ago. It's the one book Leo's um, read. We, I have it's the my book favorite. in my house, but isn't that about like the guy finding? Isn't that like a brain surgeon? No, no, you have no. That's like, absolutely not what it is. Listen. Oh. That's it's about a young. Versus. It's about a young boy. All right, much like you. All right, and he's following his personal legend, but he didn't really know what it was yet. But he takes a little break and he works at a crystal shop, right? Maybe uh, your crystal shop, you know, is Danny Mullen. And maybe your personal legend is in front of the camera. You ever think that... Well, now it sounds like he's getting fired again. No, he's not getting fired. <laughs> well, all I'm saying is you've been given an opportunity to be multiple times because of your comedic prowess you've been giving opportunities to be in front of the camera and you're going to have another one coming up all i'm saying buddy is that you look at what you truly what do you really want to do deep in your heart figure that out if it's really just filming that's cool man i have no i think that's awesome but if it's not if you're just doing this because you need the 80 bucks from danny and it's a fun way to make 80 bucks all i'm saying is i've upped his pay you vote this pay? Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I said that. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you can bleep that out. Um, <laughs> that was last year's pay. We're not taking advantage of anyone on this channel. Uh, anyway, listen. Maybe you like the dopamine rush that you get when your picture is popping. Maybe more followers will make you happy. Maybe being in front of the camera is something that you like a lot too. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying is... Keep that in your mind. Keep that in your back pocket, buddy. I'm not saying you're fired. I'm not saying anything. I'm saying that you can bring a lot to the team in front of the camera. All right? And I really like you in front of the camera. Me personally, I like you in front of the camera more than behind the camera. Because behind the camera, I don't get to interact with you, buddy. I get to interact with you when you're in front of the camera. Well, now you're just undoing what all the hard work I did. So this was... Yeah, what are you talking about? What? <laughs> yeah. And it sounds like you guys are trying to wrap up. No, no. Leo just threw that curveball out of nowhere. See, I told Nico earlier this year that he was getting too in love with being on camera. Oh, yes. And his filming started to suffer. Right. Not badly. There was just the Rat Dick Ralph video was really shaky. Mm -hmm. And there were multiple times during the baseball thing Mm -hmm. where the camera was down in the dirt during action because Nico was bullshitting with people cracking jokes on the sidelines. Right. But what I'm saying is if when he comes out and Ian's filming, he can have fun in front of the camera. It's his time to shine. He can have, he can enjoy himself like that. Right? What I told Nico, though, was that just needed him to refocus. And then once he did refocus, he did some of his best work in the subsequent shoots. So I'm not trying to now redirect Nico back totally, in front totally. of the camera. Totally. I think his, his, him being a camera guy for the channel is totally legitimate, and I want him to be. I'm not actually firing him. I'm sorry about that whole bullshit alchemist speech. He probably hasn't even read the book, Nico. Don't listen to him. I'm just saying that I can read people well, he was and I written by a brain surgeon. You Oh yeah, yeah. Pablo Coelho. Yes, he's a brain surgeon. Okay, my bad. I thought you said it was about a brain surgeon. Anyway, listen. No. All I'm saying is I, I know that you like a little bit of that attention that you get in front of the camera. Is that so wrong of me to say? Is that so wrong of me to say it, Nico? Admit it. Admit that you like 
fucking being in front of the camera. Okay, so there's a thing. Who one? I'm pretty sure everyone who is part of the squad no. has fun being in front of the camera. That is not true. There's do a lot I of people that don't. Sometimes when I'm on there, yes. Do I like being behind the camera all the time? 100%. I never ask to go in front of the camera, but when I'm given the opportunity, of course I take it, and of course I get energized because it's fun. My adrenaline gets rushing. It's something I'm not used to. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay. Nico, you're not fired. You're still going to switch off and be in front of the camera, like this weekend, for instance. Mm -hmm. Let's get to the real issue. Have you eaten your girlfriend's fucking asshole yet? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's the other way around. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the other way around. She has yet to perform analingus on him. Well, how's that going? You guys have been inside together a lot now, so uh, how's it going? Uh, it's good. I mean, still just kind of not married yet, but we're officially girlfriend and boyfriend. Oh, really? Oh, you guys are official again. Time to celebrate you with a nice little tossed salad. With a cob salad? <laughs> you could celebrate with a cob too, but I would say a tossed salad. <clears throat> so have you? You've uh, you've. Tossed salad. Well, I'll ask her. She'll be my. Don't ask. Maybe some point. Grab Don't her ask. fucking pigtails and direct her with force. So you finally moved past the uh, the Dante Culpepper incident, I guess. That's what was holding him back. Yeah. Mm. Dating. Hundred percent. Wait, what was holding us back? The Dante Culpepper. All right, Nico, we're meandering now. We got to end this call and wrap this show up, buddy. Okay, well, I, let me just say one thing before you hang up. Leo, uh, Danny, did you not like the thing that I showed Oh, oh I my knew it. God. I knew it. I could sense that was going into plug territory, so I got to get rid of did that. Did you not like the thing? Who knows? <laughs> Until he's getting his ass licked, I don't respect anything he yeah, makes. totally, totally. Yeah, Nico, he... He's got this halo effect on his girlfriend. He yeah. thinks she's a fucking earth angel of some yeah. sort. That's why he freaked out about Dante. Yeah. That's why he was working so hard to get back to the official boyfriend, girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I said, hey, Nico, you're constantly chopping your girlfriend's brown box, chomping her brown box. Has she ever licked your ass? He's like, no. Have you ever asked her? No, I'm afraid. I said, Nico, no fear. Demand what you want out of life. That's right. Take what I you said, want. I said, Nico, have you fucked her in the ass? He said, no, I'm scared. I said, well, have you asked if she'd be into it? He said, no, that's disrespectful. I said, Nico, that shit-covered donut is yours to spear with your flesh oh, rod. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. How often do you get your ass licked nowadays? Uh, to be honest, I've been a little behind with my grooming regimen mm. because I always plan to shave my pubes and asshole like five minutes before my girlfriend shows up for the weekend. Nice. But then I'm always writing or doing some sort of business thing right before, so there's not time. So I've been insecure. So it's how, been a couple of weeks. How do you shave your asshole? I'm pretty sure not a lot of people out there know. I don't know. I've never even oh, tried yeah. it. How do you do it? Yeah, you get a hand mirror like oh a chick uses. You throw it on the fucking ground. You get a bick. You lick the blade. You straddle the hand mirror that's on the ground and you start fucking shaving. Besides licking the blade, are you serious about the mirror on the ground? Hell yeah. And I'm wow. serious about licking the blade. Okay. You like the saliva really uh, adds, it's better than, uh, you know, what, I don't know what, shaving cream? Shaving cream is it's harsh on my delicate skin. Ah, gotcha. All right. So you shave your asshole. That's nice of you. You know, it's a nice, it's a nice uh, gesture that you make. You wouldn't um, expect that out of me. I would not expect that out of you at all. I care no. about ladies. Yeah, you do. You do. That's so sweet. And then, and you do it legs up or on all fours? I do it dead insect style. So okay. legs up on my legs back. Up. Legs up on your back. That's your favorite way to do That's it? That's my favorite way to get my asshole munched. Nice. And I reciprocate too. Don't you oh, think yeah. I'm not doing it? But I fucking grab Mia by the scruff of her neck, throw her face down on the bed, yank down her yoga pants, and just wow. start chomping on ass. Really? Even, I mean, you know, she's got that long drive. Does she shower? Or? I know. I can smell it on a woman. If she's fresh... Because there are three places I smell when she walks through the door. Okay, let me, let me hear it. The back of her neck, mm -hmm. her abdomen, mm -hmm. and then her ass. You go one, two, three, right away, like no kiss, nothing like what that. What you do, here's no. how you do it. Mm. So you, you go for the kiss, you smell her, her face. Okay. The back, you can smell the back of the neck actually through that. Well, make out or just peck? Just a little peck. Okay. And then I pretend, when she takes her shoes off, I pretend I'm rearranging them by the door. Mm -hmm. And I take a knee, and that's when you get the... The sniff of the shoe. And I know. So you already, oh, wow. Wow, that's, that's remarkable. You're, you're way ahead of the game. Three steps. And Leo, you got to ask yourself too, regardless of sense, what kind of man do you want to be in this life? Yeah, 
It's true. Do you want to be a man who's a coward? Who oh, man. a little bit of sweat and a little bit of tarnished Charmin is going to fuck up your day? No, no. you just got to go for it. You know, yeah, I totally understand where you're coming from. I just, you know, got to think about the, the our old friend E. coli. You know E. coli? I know E. coli. I don't know E. coli. <laughs> I was doing the fucking thing with the syllables. I know. E. You love it. You love it. I do You've love been it. really addicted to it lately. I am. I have been. So E. coli, dude, that's the only thing. You know, it, it really can fuck you up. E. coli. So you can get that from any person mm-hmm. whose shit you come in contact with? Yes. Your girlfriend, even. Even if they're yes. a hot chick, they still have E. coli. Unfortunately, even if they're a hot chick, if feces, yes, has uh, E. coli. So I like to eat the hey, ass. Let's say, it, let's try that again. E. coli. E. coli. E. coli. E. coli. Okay. Okay. So a hot chick, the feces in her asshole, no matter how beautiful she is, no matter how not stinky her farts are, her feces will still have E. coli. Is that 100% of the time? If you come in contact with the feces, you're going to get that bacteria? No, it's not 100%. I, not that I know 100%. I, I'm not sure. I can't. I'm not a doctor. We I can need tell a doctor you, on the we horn need, we do, just to we talk do. about this issue. this issue. A lot of guys are curious about this. We got to figure this out. I mean, there were the, the whole thing on the internet about the asshole being, uh, you know, less having less bacteria than the mouth. There's uh, a lot of, uh, you know theories out there that definitely um we have more bacteria in the mouth than a dog's mouth so you know i mean who knows let's pull our expertise in my life i've licked probably 15 girls as assholes mm. a lot of them after a long night at the bar where the girl was dancing wow was assuredly pissing on the public toilet yeah and i was licking her cheeks and shit too which were on that seat gotcha never had any stomach consequences from eating ass mm. i've Never had any stomach consequences. How many asses have ass? you licked? Probably a lot less than me. A lot less than you, yeah. Four. You are such a coward. That's just not a good amount enough for you? It's not high enough. Because you fucked more girls than me, but you're not being a, a reciprocal well, enough lover. I have, I have been a, a very selfish lover for much of the, the my relationships and, uh, and one night stands. I'll be completely honest. Not everybody can be such a such a fucking killer in the sack, Danny. I I'm, I'm feel like a king and I should be serviced. Hey, Austin. How many assholes? No, no, no. What I want to know is, are you researching E. coli right now? Or are you researching ways to kill yourself? Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I can't tell based on your posture. He has a great haircut. He's not going to kill himself. Shout out to people that actually research how to kill themselves. Because, like, some people don't do it right. God, he is getting, down. He wants yeah, to you sound like you're actually going to kill yourself. How would you do it, Austin? How would I kill myself? Uh... I don't know. I used to have this joke that if I was like an old person and I get to the point where I can't wipe my own ass, I'd go fuck a bunch of like hookers or something, do heroin and then jump off a building. Do uh-huh. all the things that like you really shouldn't yeah. do within that one window because it's a day yeah. you're going to die anyway. That's a good joke. Did you sell that to Bill Burr? Um, yeah, for like, like it. 20 uh-huh. bucks. It's a pretty nice. sweet joke. 20 bucks. Nice. $20 joke. You fuck yeah, a bunch of hookers, do heroin, and jump off a building? Yeah. It's actually not a bad strategy. It's not. It's not, not at all. Uh, the heroin, you probably won't feel much. Um, the hookers, you'll, you'll be, uh, your, your endorphins will be kicking. Yeah, it'll be a good way to go. You should yeah, take like, one of the hookers with you. Yeah. Mm. They're sad. But uh, don't, don't kill yourself, Austin. Because Let's all talk about our choice methods of killing themselves. Though. That's a good topic. All right, sure. So I thought I had the most pain-free go-to way of killing yourself, but Which Austin's is, is pretty good. It's not bad. Jumping off a building? Do hard drugs. Mm-hmm. And if you jump off anything above the, I don't know. 30 second floor you're gonna die yeah, yeah, yeah because i guess that's a big risk with killing yourself is the fear is you wake up in a hospital deformed or half brain dead and now you got to live the rest of your life like that yeah so good on austin here's my strategy mm-hmm. you book a one-way flight to nome alaska okay winter time lows negative 70 degrees you just walk out there with a regular North Face jacket, mm-hmm. maybe some snow pants you got at Big Five. Mm-hmm. You got a bottle of Everclear, you just start chugging it. And then you just lay down in a snowbank, keep chugging, and take a little nap. Well, god damn. That, yeah, that, that's a, I mean, a lot of, uh, what, a lot of homeless people in New York freeze to death every year. That's probably exactly well, how they No go. Malaska is an even sure bet. Yeah, I guess I would get drunk inside to the point where I just... I'm just completely just will black out and then try to go and then just go outside. Yeah. And well, you, just... you got to come up with your own idea though. You're stealing my, no, idea. no, I'm no, I'm sorry. I, I was thinking, I was thinking about, I was, I was, you know, fucking don't take with my your suicide no, no, away no, from I me. Was, God, that's I was, my suicide. I was fucking 
fucking around with the idea of yours. I was thinking about how to make it better. Not, I'm not my, that's not my idea. I'm a bitch. I just probably take a bunch of sleeping pills. Well, that's the worst way to kill yourself. Why? Because A, it's the most feminine. And B. Jesus, what does that have to do with anything? That's how every supermodel tries to die. And you then B. Survive? Yeah. I think somebody I'm your huge, size. Yeah. I am gigantic. You'd have to get a jumbo crate shipped in from Amazon. You'd right. take all of them and you'd still probably just wake up five hours later having shit the bed. God damn it. All it's right. a terrible so way. Fun. Austin and I came at you with some real manly stuff. Maybe I did the carbon dioxide one, dude, in the car. I turned the car on in the fucking... Uh, That's which, gay. The, why is that gay? You know who killed himself that way? Ronda Rousey's father. All right, then I'd shoot myself. That guy sucks. Fucking, I'd shoot myself with a fucking sawed-off shotgun. So sawed you're gonna, off. You're going to bother to saw off the barrel before you do it? Why? Is that so you, I guess you can pull the trigger with your Easier, hand. Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't go old Papa Hemingway and use yeah, your toe? Exactly. I wouldn't do that. Why? I thought you liked Papa Hemingway. Papa Hemingway I thought you liked Old Man in the Kirk, Sea. Kirk Cobain, too, right? I think he might use the toe method. Yeah, he used the toe method too. He kind unless, of blended Austin's technique though, because God knows he was high on heroin. Unless Courtney helped him, which I believe that theory. Oh yeah, are you a conspiracy theorist? Uh, I believe that theory. Name one song off in utero. Uh, Teen Spirit. That's not on in utero. All right. Well, uh, I don't know any of his songs, but I know about Teen Spirit. And you know about the Courtney Love suicide conspiracy, apparently. Yeah. Uh, I do know about it. It's an interesting thing you chose to focus on. Listen, I, I, I would probably... <sighs> let me think, for real. What the fuck would I do? Hmm. Cyanide? Where are you going to get cyanide? I don't know. I'd look it up. I'd find it. It's I'd not it available on, on Amazon. All right, fucking... And, and I'm, uh, I'm sorry to tell you this, Leo. Getting shit off the black market isn't as simple as typing in blackmarket.com. Fine. They don't I have would... a good fulfillment center over there. I would attach a bunch of fucking salmons to my to my I would duct tape. Salmon. Here we go. Here we go. I would duct tape salmon to my entire body, cover it completely. I would then go to super shark infested waters in Florida on a boat by myself. I'd row myself out there and then it'd be the hottest day of the year. So I know they're out and then I would just lie in the water. Sharks like cold water. God damn it. Not now, all sharks. But that's you. true. I like. Can I amend this? All right. I say you and I take the same flight to Alaska, mm -hmm. but you get off in an Anchorage and I keep going to Nome. Fine. And then in Anchorage, you just wander into the woods with all those salmon duct taped to yourself. Oh, it'll be the a, same thing. And yeah. a pack of grizzly bears is going to kill an ass Yeah, grizzlies will take me on. That's yeah. actually pretty creative. Yeah. I like that you came up with that. See? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's how what I've learned about writing is ah. you got to sit down at the chair. You got to wait one, two, three hours and the better ideas come later on come in the later session. On. I like it. There we go. I like it. We arrived at some true gold in this brainstorming mm -hmm, session mm -hmm. really, earlier on you were feeding me some bullshit about advil pm you're right i went all the way from advil pm to fucking attaching sh salmon to my body to then get attacked by some kind of wild animal which is a fantastic way to die here's what i'm going to tell all you fuckers right now we're obviously joking don't yeah. kill yourselves never because if you kill yourselves the people you think you're punishing are actually winning yep i live my life to stick it to the shitheads yep. I knew in high school, yep. in college, the ones you see in my high school reunion video who were trying to fight me, the girl who said I had a small cock, the kids I was in a frat with in high school who were now doctors and lawyers who were like, oh, look at this piece of shit. He thinks he's a comedian. I hope he fails. If I killed myself, they yeah. all go to the bar and party. That's right. They won. They won. You know when I win? I win when I'm living in a house up in the Bel Air That's Hills. That's fucking right, dude. And I'm driving a fucking Lamborghini. That's fucking right. And I'm the top comedian in the world. That's right, That's baby. when I win. You need to find your version of that. That's right. And the chances of you even being alive, guys, are so small. Don't fucking throw it away. No matter what your situation is, man. And I know that me and Danny have had a, some blessed, blessed life for the most part. But if you haven't, man, get out of it, dude, and go do whatever the fuck you want to do with your life. Whatever you want to do, not what your parents want, want you to do, what your friends want you to do. Go do what you want to do, man. If that means live in a tent in Hawaii and go spear fishing for your money and get water from hoses, fucking do it. I've thought about it. Don't do that, though. Sounds like a good idea, man. No, you need money. You know who was doing that and then fucking got, a, got their first gig? Fucking Chris Pratt, dude. He was living on a tent in Hawaii working at a fucking as a waiter just completely bum and some lady was like damn you're a good looking guy do you want to uh you want to take some headshots and fuck that guy and then he fucking now it's look at him dude he's worth a hundred million i'm gonna go on another little rant here i've thought about what you're talking about with that chris pratt thing yeah there is some continuum of luck i heard cormac yeah. mccarthy talking about this the great author 
Luck is a thing. It's a thing, dude. There is the most lucky and the most unlucky person on earth. They're both alive right now walking around. Mm -hmm. Chris Pratt is definitely on the, uh, I don't lucky. know. I don't know if he's in the 1% of lucky. He's lucky. He, Channing Tatum, I heard somebody just walked down the street, thought he was hot, put yeah. him in the movies too. Justin Bieber, Dance. I'm sure the kid's got some talent and he's obviously cute. YouTube blow. Uh, his mom made him bang yeah. on a snare drum and yeah. he got super fucking famous. Exactly. That's how it went down. Yep. Whatever you've cho chosen to do in your life, whether it be skateboarding, podcast production like Austin, whether it be law, whether you're starting a smoothie company, you need to count on being the least lucky man on the planet. That's right, man. Just force it to happen, man. You need to operate like your dad's going to die, like your bank's going to get robbed, like you're going to get cancer and be out of the office for a year. You need to work like God is going to be throwing obstacles in your way like some sort of fraternity hazing obstacle course. Right. Like one of the brothers fucking wipes his ass on a tomato and hits you in the head with it. That's God. And that gauntlet you're running is your life's work. And you need to make it to the other side thinking that every obstacle in existence is going to impede your progress. And if you have that mindset and you dismiss these Chris Pratt homos as the lucky outliers they are, and you keep your nose to the fucking grindstone, then let me tell you something. Nothing will be able to stop you. That's right. Nothing will. Because Nothing. you're going to be out working fucking everybody. And it's going to take That's a right. long time. Yep. Since I've come to YouTube, I've seen every fucking shithead, Jack Denmo, fucking whatever the fuck. A lot of these people, I'm not saying actually Jack Denmo. I'm giving a random example. I've seen a lot of people who are way more successful than me. And I just thought, this guy doesn't have any talent. This guy's out partying on the weekends. This guy doesn't work like I do. And little by little, I've seen these motherfuckers sputter out and then fall out of the sky. And old Pop Danny, like the tortoise in the old fairy tale, just keeps plugging along. Amazon, And baby. soon, now, at first I was a well-known comedian, finally. Now I'm finally a relatively well-paid comedian. Soon... I'm going to be a very well-paid comedian and I'm just going to keep getting better and better and better until everybody's my bitch. Jesus. And all those fucks I went to high school and college with can deep throat me on this couch live on the podcast. Well, there you go. Guys, if that doesn't pump you up, I don't know what the fuck will. But it's not just about the money. He also, he loves uh, being able to reach uh, the audience that he thinks he needs to reach, which is a lot of people. I love what I do, but I'm not going to lie and say money doesn't make it better. Well, of course it makes it better. And also because you haven't had a lot of it for a long time. I've had, ever. Yeah. I've had jobs where, you know, I've made a hundred thousand and it's like in, and I was I had my, such a low overhead that I had spent a bunch of stupid, did a bunch of stupid shit with it. And that was a learning experience too. But it's like, you know, but money will drive you up to a certain point. I think that's probably why I always was the guy that hit the quota in sales and then just kind of stopped. Uh, I didn't go for it crazy because I wanted to go do other things. I want to do this kind of shit. But, but yeah, it, it it's something that uh, can drive you and uh, it can give you security and it's important in this world, unfortunately. It, it sucks that people have to, it, you know, I get it. You, there is a lot more to this world than money, but unfortunately, the world we live in you need it to cut, to take care of your health, to fucking take care of your parents, take care of you if something happens, man. So save some money, guys. Don't be stupid with it like I, like a lot of people are, like most of Americans are. I read this in a Grant Cardone book. I found out he's a Scientologist from Sandry, the girl from the Vegas video. Grant Cardone's a Scientologist. He wrote a really good business book, though, called 10X. What he says is that anybody who's poor... And he was talking about how noble it is and how you shouldn't put money first. Well, here's news. For that person arguably is incredibly selfish because when you're living paycheck to paycheck, when you can barely pay your rent, hey, your mama needs a hip surgery. You can't pay it or you get in trouble. Then your mama needs to pay it, dude. That's yeah. You're a selfish asshole. Take care of yourself. Be able to help your family if they need it, because that's what that's the point of having a. Uh, you know, a, a big, a lot of coconuts if you're a gorilla or whatever the fuck. Like, you have those coconuts to be able to fucking give them out when you need to. I feel a lot better now. I'm telling you. Yeah, my man. parents, when I was broke... You had a year. That it, wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, yeah. Danny, he's fighting the good fight. He's a bus boy and he's 
$3,000 in debt that he can't pay off his college loans. My parents were fucking worried about me all the time. My dad had a talk with me right when I moved down here. He said, hey, son, you're almost 30. Right now, we're helping you with your car, your cell phone bill, your car insurance. These expenses right now, because even if you make 50K a year with taxes, you really only make about $35,000. Yeah, and th when you buy a car off the lot, that's still fucking whatever its sticker price yeah. is. So yeah. there's this illusion that you may, you keep whatever you yeah. make, but with taxes and bills and expenses, and you're, you get a ticket out there, mm -hmm. and you get some unforeseen medical bill, or somebody steals your camera, you need to make some serious bread. Right. And today, I find I fucking sent my dad 10 grand, and I was like, hey, can you deposit this for me in another bank account? I just don't want to see it. Nice. I want to make an another batch of money. Awesome. and keep going he was like uh, i'm proud of you this is amazing awesome. i never thought you'd actually be able to make money in your life that's great man it's it's it must be a good feeling for him um yeah you want you want your kid to be able to to make some money man and and look we're and you have to realize when we talk about money we're not trying to be douchebags and uh you know we're, we're talking about it because it's something that we want to follow our dreams and be able to take care of our families and the only thing i don't want to take care of my family you son of a bitch. Yes, you love your mother so yeah, much. I would absolutely She's send her some cash if I could. Exactly. Yeah. You want to be able to do both. I mean, my ultimate dream was always to have like, I feel like the ultimate dream all the way up is like, there's a yacht involved and me and my dad are fishing and my mom is hanging out with my sisters over there. And then I got my hot young girlfriend who they all talk shit about. But and I got your hot young sister. I'm on the yacht Danny's too, right? dating my sister. Yeah. It's fine. It's weird. He always talks about her, the sex life on the fucking podcast. It upsets me. You know what? I don't think you would actually care that much about sex with your sister. That's the vibe I pick up. I would care if you had sex with my sister. I mean, I don't know. No, yeah, I would. If you wanted to date her, I would. You would let me date her. If you wanted to date her, I mean, look, I've seen you around. I think you're fucking loyal. You're a solid boyfriend. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. It would be really weird because you talk about the sex on the podcast and shit like that. But like at this point, you know, I, I feel like they need a guy, you know, like I want them to get married. Can we do shit, a role so. play right now? What it'd be like if I was dating your sister? So you're like, is this you at Christmas? This you know is I mean? me three years in the future when All I'm right. going to be dating your sister. All right. Oh, God. So. So how was your... Uh... No, 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 no. Here we go. I, I'm sorry. I didn't, right. I didn't set this up all the way. So you're going to start the show and I'm going to come in late. All right, cool. Oh, God so sorry, damn it. Sir. Here it goes. All right. So, uh, hey, guys, uh, you know, uh, our new thing here, we got Austin over there. If Danny doesn't get here on time, me and Austin start the show. That's how it oh, works in 2025. Fuck. Fuck. fuck, I'm so sweaty right now. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry, shit. I'm why, sorry I'm late. Yeah, yeah, it's cool, man. Why uh, why are you so sweaty, buddy? I was fucking the shit out of your sister. You motherfucker. I knew this is where it was going, buddy. This is how you start every podcast That's all in 2025. <laughs> that was, and it's we, fucking ridiculous. We can come back to the present. That's all I had. <laughs> That's all I had. It was 2025 is the year I said it was. Yeah. I'm, anyway, so yeah, dude. Look, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I feel like, yeah, dude, if, if I was dating somebody's sister, then you're all, everybody's going to be like, whoa, dude, that's... You know, that's one of the shadier men in, in the universe. But I'm not actually going to date your sister. And this is all. Yeah, I know, buddy. I know. But you could be on that yacht. But anyway, yeah. The uh, you I, know, that's my ultimate to take care of your family. What the fuck? Dude? They took care of you, dude. No matter how much they, every every father and and, and mother can, was going to fuck you up a certain amount. You got to forgive them, and then at some point, dude, you're going to take care of them. If you can take care of them, that's how the world works, dude. And then they leave the world, and then you your kids will take care of you one day. And that's I guess that's how it should be, man. That's how well, it should be. My kids probably aren't going to want to take care of me. Yeah. Kind of gonna... how much I'm going to molest them. Oh, my fucking God, dude. A molest... We go from that to a molestation joke. That's why this podcast is the best, guys. And if you guys don't think it is, that's fucking ridiculous. Because I've listened to other podcasts out there, and nothing's more interesting than the fucking Leo and Danny show. I wish I could say that. I'm pretty insecure about my abilities to do anything. So I don't know if it's the best. You bet. are insecure, yeah. But, but you shouldn't be, man. I think... Uh... I think that a lot please of, know that you're going to be biased if you tell me right a now. Lot of, there's this a lot is the of best lesser, podcast ever. Listen, I am being biased, but I, uh. but I, I do think we're. It's actually I do think it's a very good podcast, and I think that you think they're getting two guys that uh, are 100 percent into sharing every detail of their life for the most part, and I think that that's already a big 
thing. And uh, I think we both have weird life experience put together. And, and I think it is. I really do believe it's a great podcast. It's good that we both have nothing to lose. Right. Whereas a lot of other podcasts don't have that. No, man. And we don't have absolutely nothing to lose. Not absolutely nothing. There are but... private little things we keep from the audience. Sure. And I might not uh, express every dark thought that comes into my head with regard to my girlfriend, mm-hmm. my work, my... Mm-hmm. But for the most part, we're 90% honest, as you said. We're 90% honest. We're 95% honest. We're 97% honest. Right. And what you're seeing Whereas is... Whereas Joe Rogan... Yeah. Joe Rogan can't talk about fantasizing about his wife's sister licking his ass. No. I confess to wanting me as roommate to lick my ass. Yes. On air. Right. That's incredible. That's I did some other shit. thing that I don't remember that was revealing. I feel like that makes these guys... You guys that are listening to this on your commutes, before bed... We thank you because, you know, you, you're part of this and we, you know, you are our friends as well. And we're your friends. We're not, we're not their friends, are we? I'm their friends. All right. Uh-uh. Uh, anybody who listens to this podcast, I'm definitely your friend, dude. Because you know more about me than fucking some of my friends, dude, uh, in the real world. Uh, That's the truth. Okay. And yeah, it is nice to not have anything to lose. And it's a, it's a great outlet. But anyway, yeah, I, you... uh if, if there are other guys, if there are people out there that think that they're fucking special and and do and do great things just because based on that confidence, man, just own it. Because you, of all people, no matter how much of a fucking asshole you are sometimes, uh-huh. should believe in yourself. Uh-huh. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I believe in myself. I just always have this feeling that what I just did was never good. I've never really ever felt satisfied going home from a video shoot Mm -hmm. that what we just shot was a solid piece of content. Yeah. I might think it's passable. I usually always think it's passable, but I'm never like fucking knocked it out of the park today. I never walk out of this podcast room. We nailed it. This is going to be a great episode. Never. You know when that might happen one day when you're getting close to retiring and, uh, you know, somebody gives you $100 million to make your Borat film. You know what I mean? Where you have every bit planned out. You got 10, 20 people setting it up for you. That's when you're going to say, all right. I fucking nailed it. Right now, we're st- we're still fucking indie, I independent filmmakers. I guarantee Sasha Baron Cohen watches Borat and Thinks notices something. Yeah. only the things that went wrong. I don't. Yeah, He's at the rodeo scene where masterpiece. where he gets people to cheer at lesser yeah. intervals as his, his chants get more and more ridiculous about dead lizards and killing children in Iraq. Then he gets a horse to fall over. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he's furious when he watches that scene yeah. because there was a pregnant woman who threw a corn dog at him and yeah. the cameraman didn't capture it. So you're saying you're Michael Jordan. You're just you're always you're competitive fire. You're, you're never you're a perfectionist. I was listening to this Bob Dylan documentary or watching it last night with my girlfriend. And he says that as an artist, if you ever feel like you've arrived somewhere, like, oh, now I'm comfortable. Now what I'm doing is good. Mm-hmm. You're done. Yep. And you should always feel like, okay, I can get better. I can try this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try this new thing. That's how I am, I guess. I love it. No, And I love it. And that's the cool thing about acting is that you start getting better at at the focus necessary right before the scene and you get, you get in the zone faster and that allows you to be better at auditions, but you need to work that and keep doing it. And as you grow as a human being, you get even better and better. So there is no end in sight with acting. And I love that. Like the, the more you practice, you, you can focus and you can do better at auditioning. You're more real. But then as you grow as a human, that artistry is going to get m- even more interesting and there really is no end to it. And I love that about acting and I, you know, I use it in, in our videos all the time, you know, and I feel like, yeah, we, you know, these are, are only going to get better and they're only going to get fucking better. I will right, we'll wrap it up. I love all you guys.